today? Well, I had quite a day with the Lord. Been in the Bible most of the day today. About two or three good sermons that God gave me for the future. And he gave me something special, I think, for tonight. An old familiar uh, account of a happening in the book of Judges, if you want to go there, please. The book of the book of Judges. I've entitled a message tonight, Little is Much if God is in it. Little is much if God is in it. And we're going to be going to Gideon's victory with the 300 men. I'm going to learn some things from that tonight. Maybe a little, little bit uh, familiar to some of you, but it's a wonderful passage of Scripture. And by the way, it's a real battle. It was... A real miracle performed by the Lord. And Gideon, of course, was a humble servant of the Lord. And God found him thrashing wheat at wheat, pre wheat press. So he was busy when God found him. And God always calls busy people. And he wants us to be busy after we are in his full-time work. And so living a life and serving God... You can just be prepared for miracles and for almost impossible situations that God's going to see you through because that's the way he gets glory, praise, and honor and shows himself strong in the behalf of his own ministry and the ministry he puts us into. All right, so little as much if God is in it. You know, in our society today, uh, people think bigger is better. Bigger is not always better, let me tell you. Because, you know, uh, the church itself was started with Jesus. And one by one, he called 12 disciples in the church of Jesus Christ. The biblical church was established by he and the apostles. Now, some people think, you know, when they begin to de name denominations, you know, that they think that uh, Baptist people are part of the Protestant movement. We, we are not part of the Protestant movement because that word is protest, and it came when Roman Catholicism was protested. Uh, when Martin Luther began that great Reformation, he read in the Bible where the just shall live by faith, and the church was saying, you have to live by the church. And he said, somebody has to be wrong. Either God's wrong or the church is wrong. And he deemed that the church was wrong and God was right. So a lot of them split off and had a lot of denominations come out of that. The Methodists, the Lutherans, the Presbyterians, all those others that's known as Protestant churches, they came out of Reformation. But you know what? Baptists have never been a part of that because we never protested Roman Catholicism. We were never, ever a part of it. Okay? So that's why they call us sometimes fundamentalists instead of fundamentalists. And that's okay. God said we're to be peculiar people, right? So, uh, and, and we are, but we just go by the Bible and by the writings of Jesus and the apostles and the book of Acts is uh, the church building structure and all of those letters to the churches that was founded by the apostle Paul, began with Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Ephesus, and all those uh, letters to the churches were churches that Paul established in his missionary journeys. And they were all considered independent, fundamental churches that was listed in the, in the New Testament. And then you have the writings of the seven churches of prophecy, uh, representing different times of the, church, of the church age. You have what God has to say about them. 
They, you have his commendations as well as his corrections. And, and every single one of them had some issues that God had to deal with them on. So anyway, I'm glad to be a part of a Bible-believing church. And I'm glad to always be able to come and teach and to preach out of the Bible, the Word of God. God never, ever fails. And so we've gone through some things. I ask that you would pray for all the churches right now. All the churches really are struggling. Uh, COVID did a number uh, on not only our church, but other churches too. And after COVID, you know, it hit and messed everything up. Uh, people left the church, and many of them have never returned to church here, maybe never returned to church any place. And all churches have been struggling right now uh, since COVID hit. And then on top of COVID being, uh, causing a number here, we've had, we've had uh, a, a group of our old, faithful, wonderful, tithing people that's passed away one right after another. And so financially, our church is hurting right now. We need to have some growth, and uh, the only way we can do that is for God to bless us as we uh, go out into the highways and uh, invite folks to church and pray that God will bring us some good supporting people. So I'd just like to say if you're out there uh, and you're not in church someplace, Come give God a shot at, at Temple Baptist Church. There's a place to serve the Lord here. And there are many churches that's blessed with people, and there's not enough jobs for them to do. They just have church attendance, and maybe they give or live their lives, but no place to serve. That's a shame because there's so much work to do for God. And so don't ever underestimate a little church. Temple, this Temple Baptist Church in its history has never been really huge in number. But huge ministries have come out of this place all over, all over the world. And tracks by the millions gone all over the world from this church. So it's not about the numbers that's in here. It's about the results of what happens to the ministries of this church. And this church is going to stand well in history as being very, very important. And this church is little, even little in number. Let me tell you something. That's why God put this thought upon my heart. Little is much if God is in it. And if God isn't in it, I don't want to be in it. Okay? Where he is, there's blessings and there's victory. And God's promised these things. So we need to, we need to buckle up and, and, and uh, search God and ask him uh, how we can best help the growth of this church to meet the needs. And prayer changes things. You've heard that. And God has always come through with the miracles that we need to survive, all right? But let me tell you, every little Every single person is very important. So if you don't have a place to serve and you're going to some church just to sit and no place to serve, I want to offer you a place to serve God, a place, place that preaches the Word of God and teaches the Bible, and you'll, you'll find a friendly, warm welcome at Temple Baptist Church. So please come and enjoy the Spirit of God with us. And test it out for yourself, all right? And that's all what my challenge is tonight. Uh, I want to go to Judges chapter 7. Then Sarah Babel, who is Gibeon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched outside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into thy hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath done, hath saved me. See, God wants the victory 
And so people like to take the victory, whether you don't or not, because God gives us a victory. But every victory we have is not our victory. It's God's victory. And we need to keep that in mind. So God said to, to, to Gideon, the people are too many. How many were there? Well, we find in the next verses, there were 32,000 soldiers in Gideon's army. All right? In verse 3, Now therefore, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. So that's something. You take that whole army and say, if any of you are fearful, go home. What happened? All right? And their return to the people, 20 and 2,000. Wow. 22,000 of the 32,000 were afraid and fearful and turned their backs and walked off and went home. Wow. You, can you imagine the commander Gideon as he's standing there and God told him, those that's afraid, tell them to go home. Can you imagine how he felt when they all left? 22,000. He looks around. Now he's, going, he's ready to fight the Midianites. Got a well substantial army. He was kind of prepared and he was kind of glad, you know. But God said, I don't want Israel to have the glory or the praise for this. They'll vaunt themselves. They'll brag. Look what we did. How many times does people do that? They'll do something for God and look what I did. You, you see, you know, it's like the two people that went hunting and he came back on telling his, his buddy, he said, hey, we killed a bear. The guy said, who shot it? He said, daddy shot it. We killed a bear, but daddy shot it. Amen? No, whoever shoots it kills it. Amen? And so there were 22 what you call cowards that were fearful and afraid and turned their backs and walked away. Then the Bible said after that, and there were, uh, there were, there remained 10,000. That's still a pretty good number. You can, you can do quite a bit with 10,000 people, all right? And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Can you imagine what he's thinking? Holy cow, look what you walked off. And now you're saying 10,000 is too many people? He couldn't figure out what the Lord was doing. But God was preparing a great victory with a few people. You see, because God can take small things and make them successful. So keep that in mind. So he said there are yet too many. Now God always gives instruction. I can imagine, Lord, what should I do? Well, God always gives you instruction, and, and, and he said the people are yet too many. God said, bring them down into the water, and I will try them, I will try them for thee there at the water. And God said, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go, shall not go. In verse 5, so he brought down the people into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. 
Here's the thing. The ones that lapped were observative and looking around. They bring the water up and they lap and they're looking for the enemy. They're aware. God wants his soldiers to look and be aware. Those that bow down could have their heads chopped. They're in a vulnerable position. And another thing, that crowd that bowed down didn't have much enthusiasm. Anybody that would drink like that, man, they're, they're ready to go. They're excited. You know, God's soldiers need some excitement as well. We need to be ready to go. And so God said this, and God looked at the, looked at the situation and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. In other words, send the 9,700 home. All I need is 300 men. Can you imagine what Gideon was thinking now? How in the world am I going to go against a whole army with 300 men? So you had 22,000 cowards. You had 9,700 that was enthusiastic and vulnerable. And that 300 men of that 32,000 army is less than 1%. The title of my lesson tonight is Little as Much when God is in it, and that's about as low as you can go for an army. 300 men with that task. And so, those are the ones. Now we want to go and skip over to verse 16. Verse 16. And he divided, here's what he did. He divided the 300 men into three companies. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and a lamp within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpet. Also on every side of all of the camps. And they said, the sword of the Lord and Gideon. So there's a battle cry. So Gideon and the, and the hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpet and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the lights in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand to blow with all and cried the sword of the Lord in Gideon, and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host, that's the armies of the Midianites, ran and cried and fled. Now get this. A hundred men in three companies, three here, Three here, three here. Dark. Here's the plan. When Gideon blew the trumpet, they all blew the trumpet. Can you imagine from 100 trumpets here, 100 here, and 100 here? In the still of the night, it must have sounded like thousands. 
They broke the pitcher. Now all of a sudden, lights sprang everywhere. And now you hear the battle cry, the sword of the Lord and Gideon. That's enough to scare someone to death. 300 men scared a whole army. That was God's plan, to spread them out. And every, here's the secret. Every man stood in his place. And every man did as he was instructed. And God struck heart, fear in hearts of the enemies. And so that's how it all played out. So, basically, God did a real miracle. It must have scared Gideon half to death to have his army reduced, not knowing what God's plan was, not knowing how in the world they were going to win a battle, but God had revealed it to him what to do. And when God has a plan, he will reveal the plan to you. And he did. The Midianites were defeated. The Amalekites and, and all of the children of the east, as says, lay along the valley like grasshoppers for a multitude, and their camels were without number as the sands uh, by the seaside for, for, uh, for a multitude. This was a big deal. And Gideon uh, followed God's instruction to a T. All right, so there's some simple things that you and I can take in our battles. Your battle is not Gideon's battle. It's not against the Midianites. Your battle is against the world. It's against Satan. It's about those that oppose you. It's about anything that wants to hinder you or stop you from doing and being what God has for you to do. And only you can know what God has for you to do. All I'm telling you is this, that you are important because God's got a plan for you. God's got people for you to meet. He's got witnesses for you to do. He's got things and ways for you to serve. And God's got that plan all mapped out. And so, uh, the secret of any success is unity and love and being in one accord. That's so important. That's the way that the enemies of God that was building the Tower to Heaven, the, the Tower of Babel, they said every man began to participate. They had one mind, one heart, one purpose, and every man had the tool in his hand, and they began to build. They began to build to build a name for themselves. They began to build that tower to reach into heaven. Let us build us a tower that reaches our heaven. They weren't building for themselves. <clears throat> for God, they were building for themselves. And God himself looked down upon that, what the children of men who were united together in, in small numbers, but everybody doing their part began to do this impossible building of the Tower of Babel. So God said, let us go down and confuse their language. And that's the very first thing that will break anything up, is there a lack of communication. And if, there's, and if we can't say, speak the same language, and have the same goals and the same things. And if we can't have unity, that's the most important thing that we can have, is being united together. Because it doesn't take a lot. It just takes willing, obedient servants of God to do what God places upon you. God has never called anybody to do anything above and beyond their capabilities that's why the Bible said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And so as we set our hearts on the harvest, that's what I want you to see tonight. Because our enemy, uh, our enemy is Satan. 
And Satan is God's enemy. And to keep souls lost and blinded and on their way to hell is going to hurt the kingdom of God and it's going to populate hell. And God needs us in his battle. And you know, all we can do is do the witnessing and the, and the part that God will allow us to do. We can't save nobody. All we can do is witness. All we can do is try to have an example and give them scripture and try to win them to Christ. And remember this. You think that the battle is with you. That's why it's so important when you talk to anybody. Don't talk about the church. Don't talk about what you think they should do. Don't talk about and discuss religion. Just simply give them something that God says. Except you repent, you're going to perish. That the God, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's what God wants. And if you can do that, that it won't make any difference that you're a Baptist. Because so often, uh, people are so hung up on church, church, church. And I've got news for you. Churches are filled with people that's going to split hell wide open. You know why? Because they don't hear how to be saved. The importance isn't upon God's plan, God's program. God only has one, one plan to take human instruments that he saves and draws and empowers and comes to you and has, has us to go and to preach and to write and to pray and to witness and the Holy Spirit of God, he's given us inside with the power and he's given us the entire word of God. We've got every word that we need from God in this book. Every question that you can ask, the answer is found in this book, either in direct statement or in direct principles from God. We have everything that we need. And all we need to do is get the barriers down Get God's word and truth to their heart so they can make an intelligent decision as the Spirit of God deals with their heart. God wants them saved. We want them saved. Loved ones want them saved. How many people have I heard say, I don't want to go to heaven and my love will not be there? The saddest thing in the world would be to lose your loved ones and have them totally forever forgotten and cast away from God and everything good forever and their memory erased. Never, ever another hope or a chance to miss the lake of fire. It's so important. And right now, people are so busy living, they're not preparing for death. We need to prepare. And it's not something that you want to wait till you have one foot on a banana peeling and the other on the gravesite before you trust God. I believe in deathbed repentance. I've been able to salvage souls right on their deathbed. And thanks be unto God and his goodness and his forbearance. And all, all those years they shut God out of their life. And finally, God made his way into their world and had them come into his world. That's so important. But God needs people. God needs to be, people to be saved. Everybody needs the Lord. And that's the main job that we as Christians have, is to be those examples. And notice what Gideon said. He did not tell this army, that 300 men, you do as I tell you. What did he say? You do exactly as I do. When I blow the trumpet, you blow the trumpet. When I break pitchers and make a lot of noise, 
You break the picture. When I shine my light, shine your lights, can you imagine a hundred men and a hundred men and a hundred men all spread out and they thought the armies were all around them and it struck fear to their heart. And then give the battle cry, the sword of the Lord and Gideon. Man, he's got armies. They already knew he had a lot of men. They probably didn't know that when he started, he had 32,000. They probably didn't know that it was reduced down to 300 men. But can you imagine? That's the only thing that worked. It's because God took the few and gave the victory. So God can take the few and he can give the victory. Here's what happens. If that's a battle plan and the only formula for success, we can have people not blowing the trumpet. You know what blowing the trumpet is? It's warning. It's warning the lost, the cost of their soul forever. We got to blow the trumpet. And yet, some people say, I can't, I can't play the trumpet. God didn't ask you to play it. He asked you to blow it. Amen? He don't want you to play it. He don't want you to play around with it. He wants you to sound the trumpet. Have we got anything to sound the trumpet with tonight? Jesus is coming. How about that one? You're going to be left behind any moment for the creatures of the deep to come upon your flesh. This world is going to be burned with fervent fire and melt. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There's salvation for everyone that will say, Jesus, I want you. I ask you to come in. Why are we so fearful to ask them? Would you let Jesus in your heart? The truth is, beloved believers, we love the unsaved far more than they love themselves. Because we know the truth. We've experienced it. Because the Savior came in. And saved our soul. And I'm here to say it's a pretty good life. It's the best life you could ever have. The miracles that you'll see from God because he's on your team. And Jesus said, you're either gathering with me or you're scattering. And he that's not gathering is scattering. You can't remain neutral. In this battle, we're commanded with that great commission and empowered and commanded to go into all the world, beginning with our Jerusalem. We can't ignore God's commandments. If we can set our hearts on building the kingdom of God, just getting people saved for the kingdom of God, don't tell me that God's not going to add to this church. As those in the early church began to serve, I find where Peter preached and 3,000 souls came to know the Lord. I find in Acts chapter 4 where, where 4,000 more plus women and children were saved. That's over 8,000 added to, to the early church. And they were trying to build the kingdom of God. 
and we may be few in number, but we can be greater. We ought to strive. And the success is not in our numbers. The success is in the success we have for God in reaching souls. Let's set our hearts. Let's set our mind. We can't say because we're little, we can't. You look at the little things. This is a great sermon, by the way. Probably put it together. Pastor Dave, don't. Look at all the little things God used. A little star way up in the billions of galaxies. Hung there for years, it did nothing but just how much it lost its sparkle among all the other sparkles. But one day God called it out. Little star, here you are. There's some Shepherds in the field that need to see you. There's some wise men that need to know where Jesus is. By the way, wise men will find out where Jesus is. That little star. God used clay and spittle to heal a blind man. He used a staff in the hand of Moses to part the Red Sea. He used a rock in the wilderness to be smitten to feed millions of people in the world. I'm just here to say he's a good God and he's never changed. He's never lost his power He's never lost his love. And we ought to love him more and more, more and more every day to set our hearts on the things that's important to God. What's important to God? Seeing souls saved, having his word proclaimed and given out and preached in the churches, having God's people take the word of God and the Christian lives that he's blessed them with and spread it so we can win people to Christ. You say, preacher, I'm not much. I'm not either. But I am all God in my responsibility. You are all God had in yours. Little is much when God is in it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this account of Scripture, for the thoughts you've laid upon my heart. Bless your people as we work and labor for you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen.